this is a prison strip. I don't think it'll be much more than water. Uh, this is about the man that I know. Not intimately, but from a distance in prison. Close to a distance. I know him as a person. Anyway, uh, it's called Cuba or Cuba. Cuba is what is known in prison prison jargon as a peddler. And he is a real hustler in the sense that if there is anything in the way of contraband to be obtained within the prison, such as eggs, meat, grease, winter overshoes, coats, shirts, tailor-made pants, special hair preparations, aftershave lotions, etc. He is the man to see. And when any new young boys or fags or potential frauds appear on the scene, Cuba is the first to know and loses no time making contact. When I met him, he was serving out the last year of a 10-year sentence. He had been paroled on one occasion and deported back to Cuba. From Cuba. And he refused to remain there and, through some manner or other, succeeded in returning to New York, where he immediately became a dope douche. And he operated fairly effectively until he was caught and returned to prison. I don't recall a great deal of his past history, although I became friendly with him and he spent much of his time telling me of himself. And the first time I saw him, he was coming across the prison yard. It was summer, and he was without a shirt. The entire upper part of his body was a mass of scars from the shoulders to the waist. And once seeing him in the shower, I noticed a continuation of these scars on his legs. He obtained these scars, which are like shrimp pink colored welts, by lacerating himself on numerous occasions with razor blades. Whenever he becomes enraged or has a, a fight, or does something of which he is deeply ashamed, he slashes himself after. And just a, walk, a short while before I left, he went into his cell after an episode in which he had beaten a man severely in a fight and had been punished with 60 days of key blood, 60 days which meant almost solitary confinement, and cut himself so that something like 172 stitches were required to staunch the flow of blood. He is a short stature with a well proportioned body. He is a bright tan color with, other than several than scars, a smooth, almost delicate appearing skin, quite free of chest hair and nearly beardless. He had pleasantly symmetrical facial features with a large brown O on his left cheek. His eyes are a deep, innocent brown. He wears at all times a thin gold chain with a large, nearly the size of a quarter, medallion given him by his mother, and a thin red silk cord with a tiny rose-shaped knot in it, of which he is quite secretive, refusing to explain and resenting having anyone touch him around his neck. He considers himself a great lover, and he is always in the midst of a passionate affair with one of his fellow inmates. He constantly speaks of the size and shape of everybody's ass, but I will explain in positive terms why. I got to it's time he sees the nice, which especially 
refused to do it. <laughs> he goes to great lengths arranging, uh, arranging uh, meetings in the yard with his uh, most uh, recent desire and will entice them up to his court where he surreptitiously feels them all the time trying to convince them that they should try and get a job in the mess hall where he is working and that all he wants to do is kiss them on the ass. He will say, I know what fuck you. Just love you. Mine. I like your ass. Come in the mess hall. We have our own shower there. We turn steam on in the shower. Nobody see. I come lots of times that way. You let me love your ass. I jerk off. And sometimes he is successful and goes around beaming at everyone and telling them and all his friends all about how this time he has a lover that really loves him and that this time he is not only going to kiss ass but he's going to get him. And he keeps himself well supplied with cigarettes from peddling activities and sees to it that his current interest is never without slugs. He's a very kind person and always doing unexpected favors for people. He likes, he gambles a great He gambles a great Oh, and if he, he gambles, and if he wins, gives all his winnings away to people he knows haven't anything of their own. About a week before I left the prison, Someone turned a note in to the principal people. Just what it was supposed to have contained, no one was quite sure. But whatever it said apparently caused the principal keeper to refer Cuba's name to the prison psychiatrist, who promptly called Cuba for an interview and resulting in Cuba being sent over the wall to the state hospital for the insane. When prisoners are transferred from the main prison to the state hospital, they are, if violent, placed in straight jackets, restraining jackets, what they call them, and if not, violent, are handcuffed and ankle shangle, shackle. <laughs> when we last saw Cuba, he was being literally dragged into the waiting station wagon and was wearing a strange jacket.